Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Friday the 15th of September, mid-month. And for mid-month, we've got a very interesting set of parameters to look at. You've got the, oops, I got, this is the E-mini that I had here. I'll just show you the E-mini just real quickly. Oh, this is E-E-S-U-Z-2-3, there it is. Making another one of those H patterns. Is it going to break the low of the day? Oh, this is going to be very interesting. All right, let's just get right on with it. Basil Chapman, I am the uh, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time each day, and my service here is the opening call daily newsletter. We're looking at the Dow right now, down 260 at 34,647. Yesterday, with that very strong move, the Dow managed to flip from the nine period moving average being very negative to a green positive one. And I watched to see, is it possible that today in one day, it could flip to negative? Well, the day is young. We've still got almost an hour to go. We don't know yet if that's going to be the case. Uh, but let me show you something right here. This will be, this will set the stage for what we're looking at this week going into next week. Mm -mm. See this chart? All it does is has, uh, this is a closing price chart of the Dow. That's a big thick line. The green is the nine period exponential moving average. And the 14 period moving average is the black Ida webinar on this uh, just uh, recently in August. Um, what we're looking at in terms of when it stays green, that's really positive. When it goes pink, that's, that's negative. But look what happened yesterday with that very strong move. It went to L, which means just this indicator, not everything means long. That's the upside. But intraday, just minutes ago, it started to go S. It started to show that S again. Now, that says to me, if you look at this particular chart, just from this one indicator, look what happened way back in April, going to the May uh, trading session. R look, right here, April the 26th, to April the 27th, it went pink in the QQQ. It did not change to to um, pink after it's flipped the next day to green until right here on the 7th of August. It means months you could go just trading this one indicator. Now, I wouldn't recommend using just one indicator, but it's, it's one of many that I use. I call it the indicator of last resort. And um, I'll explain why as we move along. So let's just go through the numbers here. So the Dow is in an arch. This is a pattern that I look at all the time. I look at arches. I'll just do this real quickly. People know this uh, who know my work, but I'll just show this right now. Uh, I've got it right here. If I can move that away. Here we go. I look at co uh, core patterns. One is a straight line up. The other is a straight line down. The other is a cup formation and an arch formation, just these three uh, particular movements, formations are very important. You'll see that all the time. Look, there's the arch formation. There was a little mini cup formation that failed. There is another arch formation. It held the low that, uh, uh, right here at 34,022. Then it made a second arch formation. So the lowercase h, I call it the dreaded h, because when it takes out this left side low, as it did over there, it can go a lot lower. Well, look at this. When it goes to a peak A or a B and then fails, that's higher highs. Peak A is the first, peak B would be the second. And then takes out this left side low, you've got to be really careful. But if it holds and then it rallies again, it can make an arch formation. Then there are a whole bunch of rules that go. But basically, the arch formation says you're kind of stuck in a rectangle sideways move. Well, lo and behold, look what we did. Arch formation. Rallies, comes back in. You can see the S. The day's young. I can tell you, between I've seen the last minute where things change, and you can get this S just disappearing, and you can have a really good rally at the end of the day. So, so it's a daily bar. We can only talk about it at 4 o'clock when the bar concludes. So the Dow right now, down 260. <clears throat> Yesterday was up 305, and now it's given back a chunk. It's had a made a lower low. Uh, but look, I use these indicators. The MACD's okay. The stochastic is weak at 61%. This blue line, the on-balance volume, which is the, the, this is the one of the key indicators that gave us the sell signal right here at the exact high of August the 1st at 35,679. And we still remain short on the shorter term because I have to emphasize in all these charts, look, the weekly charts have not given any signals. They're still in buy modes. Monthly charts, we don't have to talk about that until the month's finished. Look at the S&P. S&P right here, 
And where did I type that? Let me just find where I typed it. There we go, SPX, X, there we are. Look at that. The S&P sharp move down on the 50 period exponential moving average. That pink, that green nine period moving average hasn't flipped to negative yet, but it looks like it wants to. And let's go to the S&P here. We'll look at this chart. It's all just got those three lines. Easiest indicator you could use. Look, there it is. Uh, S&P, green, but the price is coming down yet again, and it's getting closer and closer, but it has not turned negative. I, I, I can assure you that we, I'm only watching this closely because by the end of the session, let's see if the Dow, that indicator has moved. Nope, it's still S. That means it's still in the cell, uh, cell signal on the one indicator. All right, here we go. We're getting back to our story. We got the, so the parameters I'm looking at for next week, if I don't care what the reason is, if there is a spike, they can take the S&P to the 45, uh, somewhere in here will be the first step. So about 45.22 area, that'll be really good action. That'll really help the weekly chart. But if for any reason, come Tuesday or Wednesday, and we sort of start looking at 4,400, that's not very good. All right, so here we go. Each one, I'll do the same thing here. The QQQ is the index 100. And this, this technique here, I'll just do this one very quickly just to show you because we're always having new people looking at the uh, uh, coming to TF and N. So let me just show you. I have a, a, a pattern that I call the falling axe. That's just a nice, simple way of looking at something that is really a declining, expanding cone formation. What happens is price goes to a peak D, E, or F. That's the fourth or fifth highest peak. Then it starts to pull back and it makes lower highs and much lower lows. There. And then all of a sudden, it, it forms some kind of support and it starts to rally. Well, this trend line right here, this down, the, the upper trend line, declining trend line, that is, if that's taken out, you could have a move that goes one-to-one -one expansion to the upside, but you're going to go one thing at a time. So what I've learned to do over the years is within this upper trend line, I draw a tiny little channel, and it's incredible how many times the price goes right to the edge and then pulls back. It does not break out. That's what we see in the QQQ. And as I said before, the SMHs are really helping it to pull back. I'll be back. Bells of Trapper sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. He'll be back on Monday.